attention. Don't skip because there's a plot twist brewing, and you might just be the unsuspecting protagonist. Imagine this. As you go about your day, oblivious to the danger lurking ahead, there's a trap being meticulously set, and guess what? You're blindly walking right into it, completely unaware. The tension is palpable, the stakes are high, and the suspense is killing you. Stick around as you unravel the mystery behind this woman's cunning plan. Embrace yourselves for the unexpected twists and turns ahead. You won't want to miss this roller coaster ride of intrigue and deception. Before proceeding, please confirm your belief in God by responding with yes. Remember, our impact on the world is shaped by what we give, not just what we receive. A modest donation of $40 can provide nourishment for a child for multiple days. Are you ready? Consider this. How can one find freedom if they remain unaware of the confines that ensnare them? Seek guidance from the Father. I'm reaching out to you because a concerning matter has come to my attention concerning you. It appears that a certain woman is laying a trap for you, and it's imperative for you to know who she is. Surprisingly, she happens to be your closest friend. Yes, you heard correctly. She's planning an event with the aim of depriving you of your valuable possessions, violating the sanctity of your trust. While I cannot offer extensive details at this time, I urge you to exercise caution and vigilance in your interactions with her. Just as a lion cannot fend off snares or a fox to fend against wolves, it's crucial to possess the cunning of a fox to uncover traps and the strength of a lion to intimidate adversaries. Taking precautionary measures now can avert potential harm in the future, and prioritizing your safety is paramount to me. Allow your prophet to share insights about the impending danger. I refer to the tale of the Trap of Delilah, Judges 16 in the era of the judges in ancient Israel, resided a man named Samson, bestowed with extraordinary strength by God, which he employed to liberate the Israelites from their foes, the Philistines. However, Samson's Achilles' heel was his weakness for women, a vulnerability that ultimately led to his downfall. Among the Philistines, a woman named Delilah, renowned for her allure and charm, caught the attention of the rulers who saw an opportunity to exploit Samson's weakness. They recruited Delilah to unveil the secret of his strength. Motivated by the allure of immense wealth, Delilah eagerly accepted the challenge. She approached Samson with cunning, bombarding him with questions in her quest to unveil the origin of his extraordinary strength. Initially, Samson evaded her inquiries, offering false explanations to safeguard his secret. However, undeterred by his resistance, Delilah persisted in her interrogation, employing flattery and persuasion to coax the truth from him. Night after night, she pleaded with him, ensnaring him in her web of deceit until he grew weary of her relentless probing. Eventually, Worn down by her persistence and captivated by her charms, Samson divulged the secret of his strength to Delilah. He revealed that his power lay in his uncut hair, symbolizing his commitment to God and his Nazarite vow. Sensing an opportunity, Delilah wasted no time in betraying Samson to the Philistine rulers. While he slept, she summoned a barber to cut off his hair, thereby severing the source of his strength. Upon awakening, Samson found himself weakened and defenseless, his once formidable power diminished. With Samson subdued, the Philistines captured him and bound him with chains, intending to display their victory over the once mighty warrior. They cruelly gouged out his eyes and subjected him to harsh treatment, parading him before their people as a defeated adversary. However, even in his weakened condition, Samson's faith remained unwavering. He fervently prayed to God for strength one last time, pleading for the chance to avenge himself against his foes. In a final act of divine intervention, God granted Samson's request, enabling him to topple the temple of the Philistines upon their heads, sacrificing himself to vanquish his enemies. The tale of Samson and Delilah serves as a stark warning. 
illustrating the peril of yielding to temptation and betraying one's sacred trust. It underscores the importance of maintaining steadfast faith and devotion to God, lest we succumb to the snares set by those who seek to exploit our weaknesses for their own gain. Delilah's story serves as a cautionary reminder about the hazards of misplaced trust and the repercussions of falling into the traps laid by deceitful individuals. It imparts the lesson to remain vigilant and discerning, safeguarding our hearts and minds against deception while relying on God's strength and guidance in all circumstances. We are called to stand firm in our faith and integrity, especially when confronted with challenges and betrayal. The story of the golden calf in Exodus 32 sheds light on this principle. After the miraculous liberation of the Israelites from Egyptian bondage, they journeyed to Mount Sinai under the guidance of Moses. However, during Moses' prolonged absence atop the mountain, the Israelites grew restless and anxious. Doubt crept into their hearts, leading them to question Moses' whereabouts and the presence of God among them. Feeling uncertain and impatient, they turned to Moses' brother Aaron, seeking a tangible representation of the divine to guide them in Moses' absence. Amid the mounting pressure from the people, Aaron yielded to their demands. He instructed them to contribute their gold, which they willingly offered, and he crafted it into an idol, a golden calf. Eager for a tangible representation of their faith, the Israelites embraced the idol, hailing it as the deity who had liberated them from Egypt. Ignorant of the gravity of their actions, they celebrated before the golden calf, offering sacrifices and engaging in festivities. Unbeknownst to them, their actions deeply offended the one true God who had delivered them from slavery. Meanwhile, on the mountain, God revealed to Moses the idolatry of the people. Incensed by their faithlessness and disobedience, God resolved to punish them. He disclosed to Moses their idolatrous behavior and warned of the consequences, including the potential destruction of the Israelites and the establishment of a new nation from Moses' descendants. Upon learning of the situation, Moses intervened on behalf of the Israelites, imploring God to show mercy and spare them from his impending judgment. Touched by Moses' plea, God chose to withhold his wrath. Descending from the mountain with the tablets of the law, Moses confronted the people about their wrongdoing. In a display of divine justice, Moses destroyed the golden calf, reducing it to powder and dispersing it in the water. He then called upon the faithful among the Israelites to take action and administer justice to those who had committed serious offenses against the Lord. The repercussions of the idolatry were severe, resulting in the loss of many lives and prompting the Israelites to acknowledge the seriousness of their transgression. Through this ordeal, they gained insight into the dangers of turning away from the true God and the significance of remaining faithful and obedient in their covenant relationship with Him. In the kingdom of Persia, during the reign of King Xerxes, there arose a man named Haman, known for his ambition and arrogance. Haman harbored a deep-seated hatred for the Jewish people and devised a wicked plan to exterminate them from the kingdom. Manipulating King Xerxes, Haman convinced him to issue a decree ordering the annihilation of all Jews on a specific day. Unaware of Haman's true intentions, the king agreed, unwittingly sealing the fate of countless innocent lives. When Mordecai, a Jewish man, learned of the decree, he was overcome with grief and despair. He publicly mourned by tearing his clothes and donning sackcloth and ashes. News of Mordecai's distress reached his cousin, Esther, who had become queen of Persia through a beauty contest orchestrated by the king's officials. Despite the grave danger it posed to her own life, Esther made the courageous decision to intervene on behalf of her people. She understood the gravity of the situation and knew that she must approach the king, uninvited, to plead for their salvation. However, such an act was strictly forbidden, and she risked facing death unless the king extended his golden scepter in acceptance. Summoning all her courage, Esther prepared herself for the daunting task ahead. She devoted herself to fasting and prayer, 
seeking guidance and strength from the god of her ancestors. Then, adorned in her royal robes, she ventured into the inner court of the king's palace, where King Xerxes presided on his throne. Upon seeing Esther standing before him, the king was pleased and graciously extended his golden scepter toward her, sparing her life. With trembling hands and a resolute spirit, Esther approached the king and extended an invitation to a banquet she had prepared, which included Haman, the very man responsible for the decree to annihilate her people. At the banquet, King Xerxes asked Esther what she desired, promising to grant her request up to half of his kingdom. Esther seized the opportunity and revealed Haman's wicked plot to annihilate her people. Enraged by this revelation, the king ordered Haman to be hanged on the very gallows he had prepared for Mordecai. Through Esther's bravery and selflessness, the Jewish people were saved from destruction. King Xerxes revoked the decree against the Jews, allowing them to defend themselves against their enemies. The Jews emerged victorious, and Haman's plot was thwarted, serving as a reminder of the triumph of righteousness over evil and the power of faith and courage in the face of adversity. The trap of the woman caught in adultery, John 8 verses 1 to 11 amidst the busy streets of Jerusalem. A throng of people encircled a woman, their whispers growing louder with accusations and outrage. The scribes and Pharisees, prominent religious figures of that era, had apprehended her, pulling her along the dusty pathways, their smug self-assurance stoking their fury. They thrust her into the center of a gathering where Jesus, the renowned teacher and healer, sat among his disciples. Their eyes bore into her, their judgmental gazes stripping her of dignity and grace. She stood there, trembling, fully aware of the gravity of her transgression. The scribes and Pharisees wasted no time in presenting their trap to Jesus. Teacher, they declared, this woman was caught in the very act of adultery. According to the law of Moses, such women must be stoned. What do you say? Their voices dripped with malice, their intentions clear. They sought to ensnare Jesus in a dilemma. If he advocated for mercy, he would be seen as defying the law of Moses. If he endorsed stoning, he would betray his message of compassion and forgiveness. But Jesus, with his piercing eyes and unwavering compassion, remained silent, stooping down to write on the ground with his finger. The accusers pressed him further, demanding an answer. With quiet authority, Jesus straightened up and spoke words that echoed through the ages. Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to cast a stone at her. His words hung in the air, laden with truth and conviction. A hushed stillness fell over the crowd as Jesus continued to write on the ground, each stroke of his finger a testament to the hypocrisy of the accusers. Slowly, the crowd began to disperse, convicted by their own consciences. One by one, from the eldest to the youngest, they dropped their stones and departed, leaving Jesus alone with the woman. Jesus turned to her with eyes full of compassion and asked, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one? Lord, she replied, her voice trembling with emotion. Neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go and sin no more. With tears streaming down her face, the woman embraced the grace she had received and departed, forever changed by her encounter with the mercy of the Son of God. In that moment, the trap set by the scribes and Pharisees was dismantled by the love and compassion of Jesus, revealing the boundless depth of God's forgiveness and grace. These narratives serve as reminders of the repercussions of dishonesty, rebellion, and manipulation. They underscore the importance of discernment, prudence, and unwavering trust in God to navigate through snares and challenges. Breaking free from entrapment involves mirroring his sacrificial love. Authentic love requires serving others selflessly, reflecting his example. However, this love isn't governed by external pressures or personal desires, but is grounded in his divine standards. 
It entails giving wholeheartedly and maintaining a spirit of openness. Many believers find themselves ensnared in spiritual, relational, and material bondage because they postpone taking this vital step. Some may say, I'll be generous once I have everything I need. Yet, when God sent His Son to earth, He first relinquished everything and then gave abundantly, even sacrificing His own life. True generosity, aligned with God's character, begins with a state of emptiness, akin to the widow with her two mites, and ends in a display of abundance and glory. These truths may provoke discomfort and elicit objections from some, who might feel excluded or misunderstood. It's crucial to open your heart, embrace correction, and allow the Holy Spirit to mold you, especially in areas where you may resist change. If you seek a different outcome, you must be ready to adopt different actions, as your current choices shape your present experiences. Take a firm stance, shift your mindset, and discard any tendencies toward a poverty mentality or self-pity. Despite the world's brokenness and the suffering endured by many, it's vital to acknowledge goodness and extend love even to those who may have caused you pain or seem different. Reject the notion that giving is contingent upon others deserving it. Consider whether you have earned the unconditional love freely given to you. Let go of any hidden idols and superficial religious facades, allowing God to free you from fear, self-pity, and arrogance. God's love surpasses conditions, reaching out to you even in moments of imperfection or error. Embrace the radical challenge to sacrifice for others, not because they deserve it, but because God's love encompasses them. Respond to the call to love adversaries, show kindness to those who hold animosity, and speak blessings upon those who speak ill. An invitation rooted in the love displayed on the cross and the principles of God's kingdom. God does not aim to instill fear but provides guidance, shelter, and a clear call as you navigate life's potentially perilous paths. Often, we drift along on autopilot, progressing without recognizing the lurking dangers concealed in the shadows. It's like navigating a maze blindfolded, unaware that each step could lead us deeper into a carefully laid trap by unseen adversaries. Consider this a cautionary tale, a timely reminder to stay vigilant and mindful of your surroundings. This is not about fostering paranoia, but awakening your inner perception, your spiritual compass, which can guide you away from danger. Have you ever sensed a subtle tug in your gut or heard an inner voice whispering warnings that you dismissed as mere paranoia? Your guardian angels urge you to pay attention to those intuitive signals. These nudges from your spiritual compass aren't random. They're attempts to guide you away from impending traps. Let's explore what these traps might involve. They could appear as toxic relationships, deceptive business deals, or tempting shortcuts promising quick gains but leading to long-term consequences. These traps come in various disguises designed to exploit your vulnerabilities and blind spots. Imagine your guardian angels standing beside you, their divine light illuminating the path ahead. They can see what you cannot, the snares carefully laid out in the shadows. As they watch over you, they encourage you to open not only your physical eyes, but also the eyes of your soul. In this journey called life, you have the power to change your course, to avoid the pitfalls threatening to ensnare you. Your angels urge you to embrace the gift of awareness, to question, discern, and make choices aligned with your highest good. It's tempting to be lured in by the sparkling allure of instant gratification. Your angels urge you to look beyond the surface. Consider whether this path aligns with your true purpose. Does it contribute to your growth and well-being? Or does it lead you astray like a mirage? If you believe the trap set for you isn't punishment, but an opportunity for transformation, express your agreement. This isn't merely a test. It's a chance for growth, a challenge that tests your resilience, wisdom, and discernment. Your angels have unwavering faith in your strength and believe you can emerge wiser and stronger from this experience. 
Visualize the traps dissolving like mist in the morning sun as you continue your journey forward. You are not without agency. You are a co-creator of your reality. Your angels surround you with love and guidance, prompting choices that align with your divine purpose. This isn't a call to succumb to fear, but an invitation to live mindfully. Each step you take can be intentional, guided by the wisdom of your higher self and the protective embrace of your guardian angels. Take a moment now to express gratitude to your angels for their steadfast support and guidance. If you value your connection with God, consider subscribing to our channel. Feel their presence beside you, reassuring you that you are not traveling alone. Divine guidance accompanies you. As we delve deeper into this conversation, it's crucial to acknowledge that the traps we encounter aren't always external. Often, the most intricate snares are the ones we construct for ourselves. Self-sabotage, limiting beliefs, and fear-based patterns can serve as subtle yet powerful obstacles to our progress. Seize this opportunity for introspection. Your guardian angels encourage you to examine these patterns with honesty and courage, rewriting your narrative with resilience. Now, let's delve into the emotional aspect of navigating potential traps. It's crucial not only to evade external pitfalls, but also to safeguard your emotional well-being. Your angels encourage you to remain attuned to your emotions, acknowledging and processing them rather than allowing them to ensnare you. Imagine yourself at a crossroads, grappling with uncertainty and fear. Your angels offer words of encouragement, reminding you of your inherent strength. While feeling fear is natural, it's essential not to let it dictate your decisions. Share a moment in the comments when you overcame fear or self-doubt. Conquering self-sabotage requires courage. Use your experiences as beacons of light for others facing similar trials. Now, let's explore the concept of trust. Trust in oneself, in the divine guidance of angels, and in the unfolding journey ahead. Trust serves as an antidote to the paralyzing effect of traps, empowering you to move forward with confidence. Type 555 if you place your trust in Jesus and share a statement affirming your trust in the comments, strengthening your resolve. Next, let's discuss the practical aspect of navigating through traps. Your angels advocate for discernment, stressing the importance of remaining vigilant without succumbing to constant suspicion. Picture yourself receiving spiritual spectacles that unveil the truth of circumstances, aiding you in distinguishing between genuine opportunities and deceptive facades. Reflect on a moment when discernment guided you away from a potential trap, sharing your insights in the comments. As we conclude, take a moment to extend heartfelt gratitude to your guardian angels for their unwavering guidance, steadfast support, and boundless love. Allow yourself to bask in the comforting embrace of their presence. In closing, let's form a circle of virtual gratitude, expressing appreciation for the invaluable presence of our angels and the unwavering support of this uplifting community. Your expressions of gratitude have the power to uplift and inspire others on their own journeys. Always remember, you are walking a sacred path guided by the radiant light that emanates from within you. Imagine you're walking through a dense fog where your vision is limited and every step is an act of trust. This is much like our walk with God, a journey through the unknown, relying solely on His guidance and not our limited perception. Today, I will share with you profound insights into walking by faith and not by sight or emotions. I am also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. My friends in this world, we are often tempted to rely on what we can see and feel. Yet, let us embrace the wisdom of Hebrews 11 verse 1, which declares, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This profound truth anchors us in the midst of life's ever-changing tides. It calls us to place our trust in God's plan, even when it stretches beyond our understanding or visible horizon. Let us walk in faith, 
irrespective of the shifting sands of our circumstances and feelings. As we journey together, we will explore seven key insights that will help us navigate this path of faith. These insights will deepen our trust in the Lord and guide us in aligning our steps with His divine will. Number one, walking by faith, not your emotions. Life often presents us with a roller coaster of emotions, and you know what? But our emotions can be misleading, taking us on a path that deviates from God's plan. The story of Elijah in 1 Kings 19 offers a powerful lesson on this. After a significant victory at Mount Carmel, Elijah plunged into despair and fear due to Jezebel's threats. Despite having just witnessed God's mighty power, his emotions in that moment overshadowed his faith. This reminds us that even the strongest among us can falter if we lean too heavily on our emotional responses. My friends, in moments of emotional turmoil, let us hold on to the truth found in Psalm 56 verse 3, which says, Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. This scripture not only addresses our fears, but also our broader emotional responses. It teaches us that our faith should not be swayed by the ever-changing tides of our emotions. Instead, we are called to place our trust and decisions in the steadfast love of God, not in the temporary whispers of our feelings. Walking by faith and not by emotions requires us to cultivate a deep sense of discernment and reliance on the Holy Spirit. It means that in moments of fear, anxiety, or even overwhelming joy, we pause and align these feelings with God's Word. It's about understanding that emotions are part of our human experience, but they should not be the compass that guides our decisions or our belief in God's promises. Therefore, as we navigate the challenges of life, let us seek wisdom and guidance from the Holy Spirit. Let us train ourselves to recognize when our emotions are leading us astray and stand in faith. Listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit and turn to prayer and scripture for truth in moments when our emotions threaten to overwhelm our faith. Let us remember Elijah and learn to rise above our immediate feelings, trusting in God's eternal plan and unfailing love. My friends, let us strive to walk by faith, grounded in the truth of God's word, rather than being swayed by the fleeting and often deceptive nature of our emotions. In doing so, we find stability and clarity anchored in the love and wisdom of our Heavenly Father. Number two, trusting in God's timing over our own. The concept of time often perplexes us. We live in a world that revolves around schedules, deadlines, and immediate gratification. This fast-paced life can sometimes make the virtue of patience seem like a forgotten relic. Yet, in the realm of faith, time takes on a different dimension. As we ponder on the story of Noah, we see a man who operated not on conventional time, but on God's time. Building an ark with no cloud in the sky, Noah's faith was not rooted in what he could see or understand. It was anchored in the promises of God. In this context, Isaiah 55 verse 8 echoes profoundly, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. This verse isn't just about God's higher thinking, but also about His perfect timing. Noah's steadfast obedience to a task that appeared illogical on the surface teaches us an invaluable lesson about the true nature of unwavering faith. Our journey is often marred by our impatience and our lack of trust in God's timing. We want things to happen now, forgetting that God's timeline is always perfect, even when it seems delayed by our standards. Trusting in God's timing means embracing a season of waiting. It involves understanding that our immediate desires may not align with God's ultimate plan for us. This waiting is not passive, it's an active, faithful anticipation. It's about preparing our hearts, nurturing our faith, and staying committed to God's course, even when the horizon seems distant. Noah's faithfulness during his season of waiting, building an ark amidst doubt and ridicule, is a testament to the strength that comes from trusting in God's timing. Therefore, as we navigate through our lives, let us seek to embody Noah's unwavering faith. When faced with decisions, big or small, let us pause and consider God's timing. This perspective shift is not about inaction. It's about aligning our actions with God's divine schedule. In moments of impatience and uncertainty, let us recall Noah's Ark, a symbol of trust and obedience in God's perfect timing. 
God guiding us to a deeper understanding of faith. Number three, surrendering personal ambitions to divine will. At times, our personal ambitions and dreams seem to chart our course. Yet, God's plan calls us to a different path. The story of Jonah vividly illustrates this struggle. Jonah was called to go to Nineveh, a task he initially ran from because it conflicted with his personal desires and prejudices. His journey, including the extraordinary experience inside the belly of a great fish, symbolizes the internal conflict we face when our plans clash with God's. As we reflect on Jonah's story, we are reminded of Proverbs 19 verse 21. There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel that will stand. This verse teaches us about the supremacy of God's will over our own ambitions. Jonah's eventual decision to obey God despite his initial reluctance demonstrates the importance of surrendering our plans to God, trusting that his plans are not only different but better. Surrendering to God's will often mean stepping outside our comfort zones and confronting our deepest fears and prejudices. For Jonah, going to Nineveh was not just about a physical journey, but also a spiritual transformation. This act of surrender is not a sign of weakness, but of profound strength and faith, acknowledging that our personal ambitions must align with God's higher purpose. Therefore, in our lives, when we find our ambitions clashing with God's calm, let us remember Jonah's journey. It's a call to introspection and realignment, a reminder that our ultimate purpose is found not in the pursuit of our ambitions, but in aligning them with God's divine plan. Surrendering doesn't mean giving up on our dreams. It means reshaping them to fit into the grand narrative God has written for us. Number four, overcoming doubts with God's assurance. Doubts are a natural part of our faith journey. They challenge our beliefs and can lead to spiritual growth if navigated wisely. The story of Thomas, often labeled as Doubting Thomas, offers a unique perspective on this. After the resurrection of Jesus, Thomas struggled with doubt unable to believe without seeing Jesus with his own eyes. His story is a reflection of our own moments of doubt, where we see tangible proof of God's presence and plan. In these moments, Jesus' words to Thomas resonate deeply, as recorded in John 20 verse 29, where he said, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. This verse is not just a rebuke of doubt, but an invitation to a deeper faith a faith that believes in God's plan even when it's not visibly evident. Thomas's eventual declaration of faith upon seeing Jesus reminds us that our doubts, when surrendered to God, can lead to a stronger conviction in his plan for us. Overcoming doubt requires an intentional cultivation of faith and trust in God. It involves seeking him through his word, prayer, and the fellowship of believers. Thomas's story teaches us that it's okay to have questions or uncertainties, but we should not let them distance us from God. Instead, we should bring them to Him, allowing His truth to guide and reassure us. As we face our doubts, let's be encouraged by Thomas's journey from skepticism to faith. Let us embrace our doubts not as hindrances, but as stepping stones to a deeper understanding and trust in God's plan. In our quest for answers, let us remain open to the ways God reveals His will and purpose for our lives. Number 5. Embracing Transformation Through God's Guidance Personal transformation is often a key aspect of aligning with God's plan. The transformation of Saul to Paul is one of the most striking examples of this. Saul, initially a persecutor of Christians, experienced a radical transformation on the road to Damascus. This was not just a change of heart, but a complete redirection of his life's purpose. Guided by God's hand, Paul's transformation, as he later became known, was marked by a total surrender to God's will. As he states in Galatians 2 verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. This profound declaration highlights the essence of embracing God's plan. It's about letting go of our old selves and allowing God to reshape our identity and purpose according to His divine will. Embracing transformation through God's guidance requires humility and a willingness to let go of our former ways. For Paul, this meant abandoning his previous beliefs and practices to fully embrace the teachings of Christ. This kind of transformation can be challenging, 
as it often requires us to step into unfamiliar territory and adopt new ways of thinking and living. Therefore, as we seek to align with God's plan, let us be open to the transformative work He wants to do in us. Like Paul, let us be willing to undergo the changes that come with following Christ. This transformation is not a loss of self, but a discovery of our true identity and purpose in God. It's a journey from who we are to who God intends us to be. Number six, persevering in faith despite challenges. The journey of faith is often marked by challenges and trials. These moments test our perseverance and commitment to God's plan. The story of the prophet Hosea is a profound example of unwavering faith amidst adversity. Hosea was called to marry an unfaithful woman, Gomer, as a symbol of God's love for an unfaithful Israel. This difficult path was not a reflection of personal failure, but a profound illustration of God's unwavering commitment and love. Hosea's life reminds us of James 1 verse 12, which says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. This verse highlights the virtue of perseverance. Enduring challenges in our faith journey is not about silently bearing pain, but also about remaining steadfast in our trust in God's plan. Even when it leads us through difficult and incomprehensible paths, persevering in faith requires us to look beyond our current struggles and focus on the greater purpose that God has for us. Hosea's unwavering commitment to God, despite the pain and humiliation he endured, serves as a powerful testament to the strength that comes from divine assurance. It's about understanding that our trials are not just obstacles, but opportunities for growth and deeper reliance on God. As we face our own challenges, let us draw inspiration from Hosea's perseverance. Let us remember that our trials are temporary, but the lessons and strength we gain from them have eternal significance. In times of hardship, let us cling to the promise of the crown of life, persevering in faith and trusting in the unfailing love and plan of God. Number seven, walking in faith, not by sight. The essence of walking by faith is beautifully captured in the life of Abraham. Called to leave his homeland and go to an unknown land, Abraham's journey was marked by faith in God's promises, even when they seemed distant and unattainable. He believed in God's promise of a son despite his and Sarah's old age and was willing to sacrifice his promised son, Isaac, trusting in God's plan above his understanding. Abraham's life resonates with 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7, For we walk by faith, not by sight. This principle defines our Christian walk, a journey based not on visible evidence but on the assurance of God's promises. Abraham's willingness to step into the unknown Trusting in God's word sets a powerful example for us. Walking by faith, not by sight, means trusting in God's promises even when they defy our logic or timelines. It involves letting go of our need for visible proof and relying on the certainty of God's word. Abraham's journey, filled with ups and downs, was a testament to the fact that faith is not a straight path, but a series of steps taken in trust and obedience. Therefore, as we walk our own journey of faith, let us be inspired by Abraham's example. Let us embrace the uncertainties and challenges with faith, knowing that our sight is limited but God's vision is infinite. In every step, in every decision, let us walk by faith, holding on to the promises of God, assured that His plan for us is perfect and His timing is impeccable. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, you are mighty and majestic. Your glory fills the heavens and the earth. You are the rock of ages, the great I am, the one who is, who is, and who is to come. Your wisdom is unsearchable, and your power is like no other. In your presence, every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that you are Lord. I lift your name on high, for you are worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. I thank you, Father, for your manifold blessings in my life and in the lives of my loved ones. Thank you for your unfailing love, your boundless grace, and your merciful kindness that greets me each morning. Your faithfulness is my shield and buckler. 
Thank you for being my guide, my comforter, and my steadfast hope in times of uncertainty. Forgive me, Lord, for the times I have leaned on my understanding, for moments when my faith faltered and I walked by sight. I ask for your forgiveness, cleanse my heart from all unrighteousness. I also forgive those who have wronged me, releasing all resentment and hurt. For in forgiveness, there is freedom and peace. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare that I am walking by faith and not by sight. I rebuke every spirit of doubt, fear, and confusion. I bind any influence that contradicts your will for my life, and I ask for wisdom, clarity, and discernment. Lord, I trust in your unfailing provision. You are my provider, and I hold on to your promise to supply all my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Give me this day my daily bread and my daily benefits. Heavenly Father, I pray that your hand of healing reaches out to touch me and my loved ones, bringing restoration and wholeness in every area where we need your divine healing. I pray against every attack of the enemy, be it on our health, our minds, or our spirits. Protect us, Lord, from all harm and keep us under the shadow of your wings. Deliver us from all evil and lead us away from temptation. Lord, I pray for your blessings upon my life and the lives of my loved ones. As I say this prayer together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We stand in agreement, united in our desire to follow your plan and purpose for our lives. Guide us, Lord, as we navigate through life's challenges and decisions. Help us to embrace your will, overcome our doubts, and find joy and fulfillment in your divine plan. Lord, pour out your Spirit upon us. Fill us with the courage and strength to face whatever lies ahead. May we, like Abraham, trust in your promises, even when they seem distant. Help us to persevere through trials, knowing that you are refining us for a greater purpose. May our lives be a testament to your faithfulness and love. In the name of Jesus, we declare that we walk by faith, not by sight or our emotions. We declare that everything is working for us and not against us. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Let your will be done in our lives as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Imagine embarking on a journey through an unknown landscape where each step forward is an act of faith and each breath a whisper of hope. This journey is not marked by the visible challenges of towering peaks or vast oceans, but by the internal battles that we face. It is marked by the moments of doubt, fear, and uncertainty that cloud our path. Yet, it is in these very moments that a profound truth emerges, a beacon of hope in the darkness. God is for us. He is the compass that guides us, the light that illuminates our path, and the strength that carries us forward. Today, we will delve into understanding how to find strength in the Lord and be assured that He will never fail us. I am also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. In Isaiah 41 verse 10, we find a promise that anchors us. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. This verse is not just a comforting thought. It is the very essence of God's promise to us, an assurance that no matter the journey, we are never alone. Together, we will discover the means to navigate life's uncertainties, fortified by the knowledge that God's presence is ever with us. Now, as we journey through life, we often encounter terrains that test our faith and resolve. These moments filled with uncertainty can make us feel as though we are journeying through a thick fog, each step uncertain, each decision filled with the potential for misstep or the risk of error. Yet, it is precisely in these moments of vulnerability that God's promise to be with us, to guide and strengthen us, becomes most tangible. Life's journey is unpredictable. We face challenges that seem insurmountable, problems that appear unsolvable, and questions that seem unanswerable. It is in these times when the fog of uncertainty surrounds us that the weight of our own weakness becomes most apparent. However, it is also in these times that the strength of God's presence shines brightest. 
The story of David and Goliath is told in 1 Samuel 17 verse 45 serves as a powerful reminder of this truth. Facing a giant, David declared, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. David's confidence did not stem from his own capabilities, but from his faith in God's power. Like David, we are called to face the giants in our lives not with fear, but with the assurance that God is with us, providing the strength we need to overcome. This journey through life, with its highs and lows, is not a journey taken alone, but a shared journey with God as our constant companion. His promise to be with us is not just a reassurance of presence, but an assurance of active support. In moments of weakness, He provides strength. In times of doubt, He offers faith. And in periods of turmoil, He grants peace. Philippians 4 verse 13 captures this beautifully. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This verse is a testament to the transformative power of God's strength in our lives, a reminder that regardless of the challenges we face, we possess the capability to overcome them, not through our own might, but through the strength granted to us by Christ. As we navigate the uncertainties of life, let us remember that we do not walk alone. The fog of doubt and fear may at times cloud our path, but the light of God's presence is a constant guide. His word the compass that directs us, and His strength the foundation upon which we can build our resilience. In embracing this journey, let us draw near to God, seeking His guidance and strength in every step. Let us trust in His promise to be with us, to strengthen us, and to uphold us. And as we do so, let us find comfort in the knowledge that no matter the challenges we encounter, we are journeying with the Almighty God who never fails us. Let us now explore the practical implications of God's favor and guidance and how His presence empowers us to face life's adversities with strength and confidence. As we journey through life, it often feels as though we are navigating a vast, uncharted wilderness. The terrain is rough, the paths are unmarked, and the destination seems distant. It's in these moments of uncertainty and struggle that the presence of a guide can make all the difference, a guide who not only knows the way, but also walks with us, offering support, encouragement, and direction. This guide is God, and His promise to be with us is a testament to His unfailing support. Consider the words of Romans 8 verse 31, which boldly declares, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? This verse is not just a rhetorical question, it's a declaration of divine support. It reassures us that with God on our side, the challenges and adversaries that we face lose their power over us. The realization that the Creator of the heavens and the earth is for us should fill our hearts with courage and our steps with confidence. This simple truth changes everything. It means that no matter what we face, we are not overwhelmed because our God is bigger than our struggles. Knowing this, we can face anything, understanding that with God, we are always in a position of strength. This reassurance helps us stand firm no matter what comes our way, confident that we are never alone or without help. Now, this assurance of God being for us is not meant to suggest that our journey will be without challenge. Rather, it is a reminder that when we encounter obstacles, we do not face them alone. The battles we fight are fought with God's strength, and the victories we claim are won through His might. Just as a seasoned guide leads a traveler through treacherous terrain, God guides us, offering His wisdom and strength to navigate the complexities of life. The practical application of this truth is seen in our daily lives. When we face decisions that leave us perplexed, God's wisdom is available to guide us. When we encounter situations that threaten to overwhelm us, His strength is sufficient to sustain us. And when we feel isolated or abandoned, His presence is a constant companion, offering comfort and reassurance. But how do we tap into this divine support? The key lies in our relationship with God. Just as communication is vital between a traveler and their guide, so too is our communication with God. Prayer becomes the medium through which we express our fears, our hopes, and our needs. And it is through the study of His Word and the leading of the Holy Spirit that we gain insight into His character, His promises, and His will for our lives. Furthermore, 
The journey of faith is one that requires trust. Trust in God's timing, trust in His promises, and trust in His character. It is a trust that is built over time through experiences that testify to God's faithfulness and goodness. Each challenge overcome and each need met serves as a milestone in our journey of faith, reinforcing our trust in God and His provision. This journey, though personal, is also shared. As believers, we are part of a community of faith, a family of fellow travelers who share the road with us. This community offers support, encouragement, and accountability, reminding us that we are not alone in our journey. It is within this community that we find opportunities to share our stories, to celebrate our victories, and to encourage one another in times of struggle. As we reflect on the assurance that God is for us, let us also consider the response that it calls for from each of us, a response of faith, of trust, and of obedience. The faith that God is who He says He is, the trust that He will do what He has promised, and the obedience to His guidance and commandments. It is through this response that we experience the fullness of God's support and guidance in our lives. Therefore, let us carry with us the assurance that God is indeed for us. Let this truth anchor us in times of uncertainty, strengthen us in times of weakness, and guide us in times of decision. For with God on our side, we have nothing to fear. We really don't. Remember, the devil is a liar. Let us move forward in faith, confident in the knowledge that no matter what we face, we do not face it alone. God is with us, He is for us, and through Him, we are more than conquerors. We will now turn our attention to the transformative power of embracing God's strength in our lives. Throughout the course of our daily lives, we encounter various forms of adversity, moments that test our faith, challenge our resolve, and sometimes threaten to overwhelm us. It's in these moments that the true depth of our reliance on God is revealed. The realization that our strength alone is insufficient is not a cause for despair, but an invitation to lean fully into the strength that God provides. This reliance on divine strength is not a sign of weakness, but a testament to our understanding of where our true power lies. The Apostle Paul's words in 2 Corinthians 12 verses 9 to 10 serve as a profound reminder of this truth. He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly I will rather boast in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This seemingly contradictory statement highlights the core of Christian strength. We do not take pride in our own power, but in God's. Our weaknesses and obstacles turn into opportunities for God's strength and grace to shine through in our lives. Embracing God's strength requires a shift in perspective. It means viewing our challenges through the lens of faith, recognizing that with God, no obstacle is insurmountable. This shift doesn't negate the reality of our struggles, but places them in the context of God's greater power and purpose. Again, it's an acknowledgement that our journey through life is not undertaken alone, but in collaboration with the divine, where our efforts are enhanced and completed by God's power. This divine partnership empowers us to approach life's battles with a different mindset. Instead of being overwhelmed by the magnitude of our challenges, we are encouraged by the knowledge that God is with us, fighting for us, and through Him, we have victory. And remember, this doesn't mean we won't face difficulties or that our faith won't be tested. What it does mean is that in the midst of our battles, we have a source of strength that is inexhaustible, a well of courage that never runs dry, and a promise of victory that is certain. Living in the strength that God provides also has a profound impact on how we relate to others. It compels us to move beyond our limitations and to act with compassion, courage, and conviction. As we experience God's strength in our lives, we are motivated to be agents of His love and grace in the world around us. Our battles, once seen as personal struggles, become opportunities to testify to God's power and to offer hope to others facing similar challenges. My friends, let us also consider that our God is unchanging and unfailing in nature. His steadfast love and faithfulness are our constant companions through every season. 
To truly grasp that He is for us, we must also understand that He will never fail us. And in so doing, we must understand His character. God is not like humans who might make promises only to break them when circumstances change. God's promises are as unshakable as His very nature. When He commits to being by our side, He means it for eternity. This assurance enables us to be confident that He is for us and face the uncertainties and challenges of life with a calm heart and a steady spirit, knowing that regardless of what we encounter, God's support remains unwavering. Living with the knowledge that God will never fail us transforms the way we approach every aspect of our existence. It allows us to take bold steps of faith, to dream big, and to pursue our God-given destinies without fear of abandonment. When we stumble or fall, as we inevitably will, this promise offers us the strength to rise again, dust ourselves off, and continue the journey. It's a reminder that our failures do not define us in the eyes of God. Rather, His unfailing presence is a testament to our inherent worth and potential in Him. Therefore, let us carry forward the assurance that no matter the trials we face or the mountains we must climb, God's presence and support are guaranteed. God is for us. He is with us every step of the way. His promise is as reliable as the dawn. In every moment of doubt, every season of struggle, and every celebration of victory, may we remember this. Our God will never fail us. My friends, let's carry with us the empowering truth that resonates at the heart of our message. God is for you. So be strong in the Lord. He will never fail you. In every step of your journey through the highs and the lows, remember that you are never walking alone. The Lord stands beside you as a steadfast guide, offering His strength, His love, and His unwavering support. Let this knowledge fill you with courage and hope. When you face the mountains of life, look to Him, draw from His infinite strength, and move forward with confidence. For in the Lord, you have an unshakable support, and with Him, you will navigate the challenges of life not just with endurance, but with victory. Be strong in the Lord, my dear friends, for He will never fail you. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, I come before you with a heart full of thanksgiving and praise. I acknowledge your greatness your majesty, and your sovereignty over all creation. You are the rock of ages, the King of kings, and Lord of lords, worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. Your power is unmatched, your wisdom and love are boundless. I worship you, Lord, for who you are, my fortress, my deliverer, and my strength. Lord, I give you thanks for the gift of life and for the countless blessings you have poured into my life and the lives of my loved ones. I am grateful for your mercies that are new every morning and for your grace that sustains me. Thank you for your unwavering presence and for walking beside me through every trial and triumph. Lord, I ask for your forgiveness for my sins, for the times I have fallen short of your glory. I also choose to forgive those who have wronged me, releasing any bitterness or resentment in my heart. Cleanse me, Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Father, I stand on your promises, drawing strength from your word. I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I rebuke the spirit of fear, doubt, and discouragement, binding them in the name of Jesus, and I claim faith, hope, and love in my life. Lord, empower me to be strong in you and in the power of your might. Fill me with the wisdom, courage, and strength to face life's battles, knowing that with you, Victory is assured. I decree healing over my body, mind, and spirit in the name of Jesus. I pray for your healing touch upon my loved ones. Mighty God, I stand against every attack of the enemy, praying against sickness, depression, financial lack, and strife. I claim protection over myself and my loved ones, asking you to shield us from all harm and to guide our steps. Bless us, Father, with your favor and peace. And may your healing hand touch every area of our lives that needs restoration. Lord, as I say this prayer together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We come in agreement, standing united in faith as we pray for each other. 
Strengthen us, Lord, to overcome every challenge with grace and to walk in your ways. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, guiding us into all truth and empowering us to live lives that honor you. Bless us, Lord, with your presence. May we experience your profound peace, joy, and love in abundance. Protect us from the snares of the enemy and let your hand be upon us for good. We declare your lordship over our lives, claiming victory over every battle, healing for every wound and sickness, and provision for every need. Let your will be done in our lives and in the lives of my loved ones, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.